good morning, depending on where you are. And uh, welcome to this Facebook Live broadcast from the ARVREDU Hub. My name is Michael Fricano II, and I'm coming to you uh, live from the beautiful state of Hawaii on this uh, wonderful Sunday morning. And uh, today I want to uh, explore Google Expeditions with you. Um, so in this uh, hour-long live broadcast, I'm going to introduce you to Google Expeditions, talk a little bit about its benefits and what you can do with it. We'll jump into a few of my favorite uh, virtual reality and augmented reality expeditions. And I've got some resources uh, to share with you at the end, including a Google Expeditions lesson planner that you can uh, get a copy of for free and use it to plan your own Google Expeditions. Um, while you're watching, uh, you can uh, tweet at me at edtechnocation, and um, I'll give you a link at the end of this broadcast with uh, access to this slide deck presentation, as well as um, a bunch of other resources. So I want to start by um, asking you a question. Have you ever planned a field trip? I mean, not just, you know, going to your you know, local community uh, resource center or you know, going across the street from your school, but really sitting down and planning, solidly planning a field trip. I, I've done this several times. And um, planning a field trip requires a few things. First of all, depending on how far you're go you go, you're going to need uh, to schedule those buses. Scheduling buses can be a hassle, right? You have to figure out um, the numbers, do some math, make sure you have enough buses, make sure those buses can fit all your students, um, make sure they can fit all your chaperones, um, calculate the cost of that bus, um, plan it out financially, get the appropriate um, approvals. Um, and so that's number one. Number two, you need time to plan a field trip. I'm not just talking about the time that uh, you spend going on the field trip, but all the time that you need um, to uh, dedicate for yourself before the field trip. Time to uh, uh, plan on every single detail, time to put those permission slips together, time to uh, communicate with your school administration and the location that you're going to and back to those buses again. But if planning a field trip can be um, a heavy, um, can, can take um, a lot of uh, dedicated time. And my favorite part of the field trip is uh, um, the, all the, the, the loads of paperwork that you have to uh, uh, work through in order to plan on a field trip. There's you know, the permission slips you have to hand out to families and get signed. There's all the permission slips for chaperones and making sure, you know, for me, I've, when I go on field trips with my son, I have to get um, you know, TB clearances for shots and making sure <clears throat> my shot records are up to date. And then permission forms for your school. I don't know about you, but the school that I was at had a stack of papers that I needed to get signed by various people at my school. Um, so there's lots of paperwork involved in planning a field trip. And I mention all these things because planning a field trip, it, it can certainly be a hassle. It, it's, uh, it takes a lot of time and effort to plan out a good quality field trip for your students. And I'm not saying that um, real field trips aren't great. Uh, planning a real field trip is necessary. Um, it's, it's, of course, it's, um, it's necessary to bring your students to those real locations, connect them, connect the learning in the classroom to the physical locations. Um, and real field trips are great, um, but unfortunately, you can't take them everywhere you want them to go. Um, you can take them to a few locations um, around your school, within your community, um, but uh, you know, obviously you can't take them everywhere. And so for those out of reach places, what I highly recommend you use is Google Expeditions, of course. Um, Google Expeditions, you don't need all these things. You don't need to schedule buses. You don't need to dedicate um, a lot of time. And of course, you don't need a lot, any paperwork, um, except maybe that lesson planner at the end. But that you don't need all that heavy loads of paperwork in order to use Google Expeditions. And Google Expeditions allows you to take your students on those virtual field trips um, without, <clears throat> excuse me, without all the, the necessary requirements of a real field trip. 
And so with Google Expeditions, the potential for augmented reality and virtual reality is great. Um, I like uh, to use these, um, these lines here when um, trying to explain to other people what AR and VR is in the simplest way possible. And here, uh, what I like to say is that virtual reality or VR can take your students anywhere, right? It's um, a virtual experience that transports your students out of the classroom, away from their physical environment, and into a variety of virtual reality experiences. And AR, or augmented reality, um, can bring anything to your students. So you're, you're still in your classroom with AR, but the ability to bring in artifacts and 3D models and diagrams and interactive experiences that students can explore and interact with while still in the classroom uh, is an AR experience. So we're going to look at both of those today in Google Expeditions. Now, for Google Expeditions, there are a few uh, requirements. There are some devices and resources that you're going to need in order to use Google Expeditions with your students. First and foremost, um, your students need uh, their own device. Right? They need um, a mobile device um, in order to uh, explore Google Expeditions, whether it's AR or VR. And uh, if you're you could use a virtual reality experience with your students, an optional, uh, an optional um, uh, piece of equipment is a VR headset. And if you want the most immersive and the most engaging experience, then um, you'll want a VR headset for your students for their mobile devices. And there are lots and lots of different varieties of VR headsets. You see sort of the, the cardboard example here. That's the cheapest and most easily accessible VR headset, but it's certainly not the only one. One that, that I highly recommend and stand by is the Merge VR and AR goggles, um, a really good quality headset built with the classroom in mind. It's made out of some really thick, um, sturdy foam. It's got really good quality uh, focal lenses inside of them. It allows you to adjust those lenses and it's uh, made for both the VR and AR experience. But again, there's, there's lots of them out there. There's plastic. Um, you know, of course, I like to say that, you know, you get what you pay for with the VR headset. So the more expensive that VR headset is, the better quality it's going to be. And the cheaper route you go with on a VR headset, you might not get the best quality experience. So just keep that in mind if you want to use um, true immersive VR with your students. And to run a Google Expeditions in your classroom, the teacher needs to have a tablet as well because the teacher um, will often be the guide in a Google Expeditions experience. doesn't necessarily mean they always have to be the guide, but um, typically the teacher starts as, as the guide in a Google Expedition, and so you're going to need access to a teacher tablet. Now, very recently, um, Google Expeditions has started to become available on the newest Chromebooks. So if you're um, a one-to-one -one Chromebook school, you have uh, a fairly new Chromebook model. Um, some, some of the new Chromebooks will allow you to run uh, Google Play apps on your Chromebook. And Google Expeditions is, is one of those apps that you can run. So uh, that's something you might want to look into as well. It's not, you know, it's not the most immersive experience on a laptop, but if it's the device you have, then go with it. It doesn't mean you have to, you know, drop loads of money on brand new devices in order to uh, um, get going with Google Expeditions. And I come from a one-to-one -one iPad school, so iPads work great for expeditions as well, especially with younger students who you might not necessarily want to take into a, a VR headset. Um, but iPads work great as well. You can get a fairly immersive and, and interesting experience from iPads. Um, and again, if that's what you have, that's what we have, that's what we, we frequently use. Okay, so um, keep this in mind if you want to uh, get started with um, Google Expeditions. These are some of the basic requirements and options that uh, you're going to have to look into. Feel free, um, as you're listening and watching, uh, toss a question in the comment box. Toss your, your thoughts and ideas. I'm, I'm interested to see how you are using Google Expeditions or how you're thinking of using Expeditions. And if you have any questions along the way, I'd be happy to address those questions if I can. 
So what is Google Expeditions exactly? Well, it's a guided AR, augmented reality, and VR, virtual reality experience. And that could be a whole class guided experience, or it could be um, a, a self-guided experience where each student is selecting their own expedition and taking themselves on a virtual field trip, either in AR or VR. Um, but nonetheless, it's a guided experience, um, which allows the teacher to very easily manage that experience within the classroom. Um, it's, an it's, uh, an, it's a guided experience through immersive 360 degree scenes uh, for VR and, and, and immersive 3D models in AR. And Google Expeditions allows you to travel beyond your classroom or bring artifacts and objects into your classroom through the mobile devices that you have access to. And these expeditions come complete with facts and history and um, in most cases, leveled guided questions that you could pose to your students throughout the experience, as well as points of interest that are gonna help the teacher point out specific areas within the scene to help your students focus on, um, on, on, uh, on certain areas in order to lead um, better discussions within your classroom. So there are two different types of expeditions. There's a VR expedition or a virtual reality expedition. And in, Google, in the Google Expeditions app, there are over 900 and growing VR expeditions, which is amazing. Um, you know, Google Expeditions is a completely free AR and VR experience for schools made by the Google Expeditions team. It's free to install, it's free to access, and the Google Expeditions team is constantly adding new expeditions. So you're not getting um, a preset number of content and that's all you have to deal with. Um, they're constantly adding new expeditions, updating existing expeditions, and it's uh, constantly growing. And now they're up to over 900 plus VR expeditions. And on the AR side, uh, which is their, their newest addition to expeditions, there are now over 150 plus augmented reality expedition experiences. So there's expeditions for practically every subject area and every grade level. You have lots of science expeditions, um, history, um, there are some math, uh, some math related expeditions. You can take your students uh, to on virtual field trips to explore different career paths. You can take them inside the human body, up into outer space, back in time, into the future. Um, so there's um, almost um, at least one experience for every type of classroom out there. And, um, and again, it's a constantly growing uh, AR and VR resource for the classroom. So let's explore some expeditions together. I wanna to show you some of my favorite, and I'm gonna show you um, my teacher tablet, which you'll see on the right, as well as my uh, personal mobile device on the left, acting as the student device. And I wanna show you what that experience looks like from both the teacher perspective and the student perspective. If you have a favorite expedition, share it in the comments. I'd love to jump into that expedition with you here live and explore together. Um, but feel free to share your favorite expedition in the comments as well so that those watching um, after the live uh, will have a great list of expeditions that they can they can check out um, based on your recommendations. Okay. So let's jump over to the expeditions app here. Switch over. So on the right side, you're looking at my teacher tablet. I'm on an iPad. And on the left side, you're looking at my student device, which is uh, for me right now an iPhone, but um, could be any mobile device, an iPod Touch, an Android phone, um, just depending on what you what you have access to. Um, and uh, I'm in my library. I'm going to jump over to Discover. Okay, so on along the bottom of your expedition screen, you have three tabs. You have the Discover tab, which we're currently in. You have your library, which will show the expeditions that you've downloaded, as well as your uh, Google Tour Creator Tours, if you've uh, uh, dived into creating your own expeditions. 
And then you have your class tab, which will allow you to be either be an explorer of another person's guided experience, or you can be the guide yourself and guide um, a room full of uh, you know, students um, on an expedition together. Jump back over to Discover. So in Discover, um, I love that uh, I'm able to search. So there's a, um, a search box at the top. I can also filter um, using these uh, designated categories across the top. And you can see as I, as I tap into them, the content changes on the screen, showing me uh, expeditions that are related to that, that category. I can easily search for just AR, which is where I'm at now, or I can search for VR expeditions. Oops, there we go. And, um, and then I can scroll through and search for anything that I'm interested in. I can also do um, a search. I'll search for space. Some of my favorites. There's lots of expeditions related to outer space and the solar system and space travel, space innovation. Lots of options there. I'm going to clear out my, uh, my search here. And then there are some new and featured tours at the top that are constantly changing every now and then um, to focus on specific expeditions. And uh, you'll see lots, a wide variety of expeditions here that you can explore. I'm jump into my library. My, in the library, this shows you expeditions that you have downloaded. So actually, uh, let me show you that process. So if I find an expedition, let's say this one on the Revolutionary War, this is an AR expedition, as you can see in the middle there, it's got four scenes or four 3D model objects. And in expeditions, you don't instantly have access to all this content. What you have to do is you have to download that expedition first. And downloading an expedition typically takes, um, you know, as little as one minute to maybe three to five minutes, depending on your network connection and depending on the amount of scenes in that expedition. But uh, I'm going to download the Revolutionary War uh, expedition here. You see the rings filling up, and there it goes. That was pretty quick. That was less than less than a minute. So, you know, this is this one only has four scenes. So it, uh, of course, didn't take too long. And um, there we go. Now that I've downloaded that expedition, it'll show up in my uh, downloads library here. There it is on the right side, under Revolutionary War. <clears throat> and so um, once you have it downloaded, then you are ready um, to guide your students on that uh, on your AR VR experience okay. so um, let's jump into one of my favorites so I um, well, uh, a, a couple of my favorite expeditions are the career expeditions um, I'm back in discovery here I'm gonna go to the careers search and uh, what some of the very first expeditions that the team was putting out or uh, what are called career expeditions. And it's a collection of virtual reality tours that take you into a day in the life of that particular career path. This is great for those career days at your school or um, in college counseling offices, the students interested in exploring a, a specific career path. There might be a career expedition that, just, that that student can take advantage of to learn a little bit more about what it's like um, in the shoes of that particular career. And so uh, th these are some of my favorite. They have career expeditions on chef and restaurant or owners, um, aquarists from uh, um, aquariums, um, uh, somebody who makes handmade products, metal artisans, museum photographers. Here's a really fun one on the right, um, paid to eat chocolate a food technologist and some of these careers like I've, I've never really imagined that they existed but uh, being able to explore them in VR here is a pretty cool experience and one of my favorite career expeditions is uh, this one here it's um, uh, it's about a coder and entrepreneur named uh, Muriel uh, Cott I'm not really sure how to say her last name but she's a coder and entrepreneur who actually um, creates e-textiles, um, suits and dresses that um, are fabricated with electronics and microcomputers and can do some pretty amazing things. And it shows you sort of the potential 
of what it's like being a coder as well as an entrepreneur on the outside um, and starting your own business and doing what you love and combining things like e-textiles and um, fashion and design with programming and electronics. And so um, I'll take you into this and I'm going to guide. Okay, so I'm going to jump in. Now when, you, when you're guiding as the teacher and you want your students to join you, you'll see that um, it gives you um, a, a guide code. It tells you to check that your explorers join the guide with this name and number. Sometimes you might have, depending on if you're in a pretty close-knit school campus, you might have multiple teachers guiding at the same time from different classrooms. You want to be careful of that. But um, I've only got one running here. So you see on my student side over here, um, uh, I'm exploring as a student and my teacher uh, popped up there in the list. See, there's my name, an expedition is about to start. So I wanna join that um, expedition. And when I join, it's gonna take me into a guided mode here. And it says paused by um, guide. And that's because as the teacher, um, I haven't started the expedition yet. In order to start the expedition, I have to press the play button, the orange play button that's down there in the bottom corner of the screen. And so as soon as I press play, that's going to send this 360 image um, down uh, over to my, my student device here. And now on my student device on the left, you see I'm in um, 3D mode. So I would pop this into a virtual reality headset in order to... Uh, get that full immersive experience. Um, just to make it easier for all of you today, I'm gonna tap on that little white square that's in the bottom right corner of my student device. And that's gonna take me out of 3D mode and drop me into um, 2D mode. So I get a much wider uh, view here. I get a, a single image. And one thing I really love about Expeditions is the ability to see my students um, and where they're at in the expedition in real time. So as I'm moving my student device, you're seeing a little white smiley face float across um, the teacher device on the right side here. And that's my student device. It's showing the teacher where my student is looking in the 360 degree um, scene here in real time. And so I can very easily tell uh, if my students are focused on the, on the area that I want them to be or I can tell which area of the scene they're most interested in based on how many students are looking in a particular um, direction. Okay, um, drop this for a second. Pardon my student looking at the floor. But uh, on the teacher side here, I can also look around in the 360 degree scene. We're inside um, the lab or the studio of this coder and entrepreneur. And on the teacher device, I've got this very handy pop-up um, information panel that only the teacher sees, right? So this is meant to be a, a guided experience, a teacher guided experience. And imagine it's as if, you know, the teacher is the field trip guide and, you know, you're leading your class group um, on this field trip. You're walking with them as a group as you explore these different places. And you as the teacher have all the knowledge and you're sharing that knowledge with your students as you walk and talk during your field trip. And so the students are just gonna see what's around them. The teacher is gonna have all that knowledge. Um, um, that knowledge uh, can either come from your own background knowledge or it can come from this handy side panel that's in on the, the teacher uh, tablet. And in most expeditions, you're gonna have a little uh, bit of uh, information across at the very top of that, that panel box there, that information box. It's gonna give you uh, some background information, some facts, maybe some history um, about this particular scene, um, just to sort of set the stage and give your students some extra information about what they're looking at so they can begin to make connections with the content and with your lessons and what they're learning in class. And then uh, below that are called points of interest or POIs. I also like to call them hotspots. Um, and when I tap on a hotspot, on the teacher side, it's gonna take me there and draw a white circle. And you'll notice on the student device, there's a white arrow that's pointing me in the direction of that point of interest. So if I um, follow that arrow on my teacher device, on my student device, I'm gonna see that point of interest there. And um, you'll see that little smiley face hovering over that point of interest. 
Okay, and that that point of interest is meant to highlight a uh, specific area or or an object uh, or position within the scene. And then um, points of interest come with um, some, some information about them as well that you can read off to your students. Of course, you know, as the teacher, you might have more knowledge than what is shared here. And so it's OK to, to share more. And you can move through those hot spots together with your students. Um, but let's say you know there's something in the scene that you want to point out to your students. And you're not, there's no pre-made hotspot, there's no pre-made point of interest for it. Well, as the teacher, I can create my own by tapping and holding on a particular area of the image. I can, I can uh, create my own point of interest just by, again, by tapping and holding. And so I can point out things that I want my students to focus on or pay closer attention to um, by creating my own point of interest um, separate from what's in the list um, um, over here on the right. Okay. Um, when you're done with that scene, or let's say you know we're, we're done exploring, I want to share some information. And typically, in a in a VR experience like this, your students are so focused on what they're seeing in their device that they're probably not listening to you, um, which is always uh, the case. You're just so excited and engaged and immersed in the experience that uh, they're not listening, right? And you want to pull them back um, out of the experience so that you can have that important conversation or pose some questions that are going to make them think about what it is they're seeing. Well, a quick way to do that is to pause the scene. Okay, Because right now my students are in the experience, they're looking all over the place, examining and exploring the uh, the scene um, on their own, but I want to pull them out. I want to get them out quickly. I don't want to ask them because they're probably not listening to me. So the best way is to pause. And so if I tap the white pause button down here in the corner, see what it does in a student device? it pauses their screen and now it's a blurry mess for them they can't they're not able to focus they can't do anything on their screen it's just telling them that it's been paused by guide and so typically what happens um, the automatic um, common response by students is they take off their headsets because they're not going to want to stare at a blurry pause screen it's just um, it's uh, too much of an eye strain for them right and they can't focus on it anymore so that's a really quick way to pull them out that's something you can explain to them at the beginning of the expedition as well, is that you can say, when I pause the scene, boys and girls, that means I want you to take off your headsets. I want you to put down your device because we're going to, we're going to take a break and we're going to have a conversation or we're going to respond to a question or there's something I want you to do based on what you just experienced. And so pausing will pull them away from the immersion and bring them back to reality. And you can have that important conversation with them. And then when you're ready to move on, I can swipe right, move to the next scene here about electronic assembly and play. And it's going to move them automatically to that next scene. And now we can continue on the virtual field trip, continue on the exploration, learn about new things, and uh, move forward in our, our virtual reality experience. I'm going to exit out. So that's one. That's um, one of my favorite career expeditions. Um, another one is, let's see, where'd it go? Oh, I love underwater excursion. This kind of shows like the, the real true potential of um, virtual reality that you know, it's not just taking them to a physical location that you could virtually walk around in and explore, right? But let's say you're learning about coral reefs or coral bleaching or um, ecosystems and you want to take students underwater well that's you know unless you've uh, unless you're nearby a place that has some amazing coral reefs and you you know you get all the proper permission form signed to, to take kids scuba diving into coral reefs which is very unlikely in most cases um, you can do that in Google expeditions you can take students on an underwater excursion and take them into these coral reefs um, using virtual reality and here we're exploring a variety of different coral reefs um, in this in this uh, particular um, expedition this first one is the great barrier reef one of the most popular of them all um, talking about what the sun supplies mm. this uh, sorry about that this um, very special uh, ecosystem and focusing on the corals as well and then moving on in the uh, scene, we're in Komodo Island in Indonesia. 
And I believe there is a shark. No, I'm sorry, a stingray. A big stingray in this experience. I believe we can see so yeah here we go galapagos islands of ecuador we can see the sea lions swim at the sea lions and these are of course these are things you cannot do in most cases with your students in real life it's just not possible you're not you might not be um near a place that can provide this you can't travel the world with your students and explore all these amazing coral reefs and um, you know, great underwater excursion locations, um, but you can do that in an expedition. I think this really demonstrates the true potential of VR. Let's uh, take a look at some augmented reality experiences here. So we saw VR. Let's jump into some AR. So um, let's take a look at how about that? Well, oh, here's uh, one of my favorite ARs is the uh, AR experience is the Earth Geology. This is really cool. So in AR, this works differently. Okay, I'm gonna skip that. Okay, so in AR, um, oh sorry, let me backtrack. In VR, through your screen, you're being transported somewhere else, and depending on whether or not you're in a virtual reality headset, your your vision is being cut off from your real environment, okay? and that's to help create that fully immersive experience but you're being taken somewhere else. You're being taken underwater into the Great Barrier Reef, or you're being taken into that, that studio of that um, uh, coder and entrepreneur. Right? But in AR, you remain in your physical environment, and through your device, your camera is going to look, it's going to see what's really in front of you, but it's going to augment that experience by adding three-dimensional objects and artifacts into your real environment through your device okay so let me back out here kind of reset this a little bit okay i'm just gonna show my teacher tablet for now and i'm just gonna view some of these in ar so when you jump into an ar expedition it first wants you to scan for a flat surface and depending on the device you have if you have a fairly new device wants a flat surface to place that 3D object on top of. So I'm going to pick up, and you'll see as soon as it detects a flat surface, it's going to drop a circle and a bunch of dots. And when I tap, ooh, that came in way too big. So I'm going to resize the earth here in a second. There we go. Nice. So you see the earth is now placed on my dining room table. And because of the technology in the device, it's the device is going to keep that 3D object right there in the middle of my table. And I could um, physically walk around that um, 3D model of the Earth. I could take my, my iPad, pick it up, move myself physically around my dining room table, and view this object from all sides. Because the device is treating uh, that model as if it's really... Um, sitting there on my table. You see, I can resize it by um, pinching and, and reverse pinching and pinching to zoom in and out. And again, um, I have the information panel. This particular expedition doesn't have a lot of information and it doesn't have any points of interest here, just some basics. But talking about plate tectonics here, you can see the, um, the, uh, the, the um, borders of the plates there in the earth. Down. And then uh, I'm going to move to the inner earth. So I'm switching. You see it comes in big there, but I'm going to zoom out. There we go. And then I'll pick this up, and I'm going to bring my iPad in to um, the model here. You see I'm moving it and looking at it from different angles, physically moving around the model here through my device. And so that's the that's the, the power and the potential of AR is that it, as I mentioned earlier, brings things into your classroom. It brings a 3D model of the layers of the earth into your classroom. And your students can place these objects on their desk. You could, depending on what size you want them, you could put that object on the floor and blow it up and make it massive in your room so students can wander around it and explore it from different angles. And so where VR transport you somewhere else 
AR brings those things into your classroom for you. You can bring in ancient artifacts, works of art, sculptures, statues, models, interactive diagrams. I'm going to move ahead here, and I think there's yeah, geological faults. Here we go. So geological faults. This is pretty cool. Like it's showing us the layers of the earth and what kinds of geological faults there are, what could cause uh, massive disruptions in the surface. So you see the, the, you know, the plates moving in different ways, right? I think it's, I forget. Um, yeah, so here's two or more plates interacting with each other. Right? You have a normal fault, a strike slip fault, right? So lots of great information, but you can see it happening. They're not just watching a static um, object, but in some cases those objects might move to, to demonstrate a model or to demonstrate a motion or a process. Out. Oops. Um, let's see another. Oh yeah, I love cell organelles. There's some really great um, augmented reality cell expeditions here in uh, in Google Expeditions. Q and A R. What needs to scan the surface? There we go. Bring in that giant cell. I'm gonna zoom it out a little bit. There we go. So here we have the cell. And it's cut in half so we can see the inside. It's three-dimensional, right? So I can view it at different angles. Okay. And then move forward. We have the nucleus. There we go. So there's the nucleus within that cell. So now it's breaking down the different parts of the cell. It's a really cool uh, experience for... Um, exploring and learning about cells or reinforcing what's already being taught in the classroom. Okay. And of course, uh, there's even there's even uh, expeditions on math, like this one, geometry types of triangles, although this one's not that interesting. I'm not really sure why you would use this one instead of just exploring it on paper, because this is all it does. It gives you, <laughs> it gives you a flat um, it, it's basically just a piece of paper on a table with a triangle being drawn, and it breaks down the the sides and what a what a right triangle looks like. And then I move on to acute, and it's the same thing. So there are some math expeditions. This is not a really good example of a math expedition, but I wanted to show you a variety that are out there. I'm not sure how this would be more engaging than just doing this on a piece of paper in this particular case, but. No, you, you be the judge of what works and what doesn't work for your students in your classroom. Okay. And then, oh, I did forget to show you a really cool tool. I'm going to jump back into underwater excursion here really quick. I forgot to show you. Wait, let's guide. There we go. Um, I forgot to show you one, one tool in here. Um, when you're taking your students on a expedition here, in this case, a virtual reality expedition, there's a little squiggly line on the teacher device up there in the corner. And that allows the teacher to draw um, in, in the scene, right? So if I draw a big circle here, I, the student will see that big circle. So I could, I could write on the scene, right? I could point to something, right, using arrows, and draw um, anywhere on that scene there. And then when I'm done drawing, I can reset it, take it away, and then turn off the drawing tool and go back to uh, exploring the scene. So I, I forgot to point that out earlier. I wanted to make sure you saw that drawing tool built in there. All right. Um, so it's just a quick peek into... Uh, how expeditions work. Saw a little bit of uh, a couple of my favorite expeditions. Um, again, if you have any favorites of yours, if there's an expedition that you've used before, uh, feel free to uh, toss it into um, the uh, comments below. I'd love, to, I'd love to hear what expeditions you're interested in using, which ones you found most interesting, or if you've used any expeditions before, share them in the comments. I'd, I'd love to see um, what uh, what interests you or what you've used before. 
Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to toss those in the comments as well. I'll be responding to the, the questions after this live has ended. Um, so if you watch it a later time and you have a question along the way, toss it in the comments. I'd be uh, really interested to uh, hear uh, um, your thoughts on expeditions. And if, you, you know, if you're not sure how something works or how it could be used in your classroom, let me know. I'd be happy to uh, respond to that. All right, so we're nearing the end, so I wanted to share some resources with all of you. Um, this, uh, the presentation I'm using today, um, you can access it via this bit.ly here. So bit.ly slash expexplore. And uh, when you visit that link, it should take you to the ARVR EDU hub. And I've got um, a whole page dedicated to this uh, Facebook Live, um, Let's Explore Google Expeditions. So the presentation is embedded right at the top there and you're welcome to move through the slides and um, access the information and the, the screens there. Um, how to get your uh, Google Expeditions lesson planner is embedded there as well. Uh, some quick resource links um, of things that I'll, I'll mention in this uh, uh, in this live broadcast. Um, once I'm done with the live I'm gonna pull the video and and um, I'll include a link to the recording here so you can watch it again later or share it with your colleagues and some, some other information down below there. Um, so feel free to check out the resource page here at bit.ly slash expexplore, all lowercase, all one word. That'll take you to the presentation and resources for this uh, Facebook Live broadcast. Now, I um, wanted to share probably the, the best resource um, connected with Google Expeditions, and that's um, the official list of expeditions created by the Google Expeditions team. This list will um, hopefully make it a little easier to find the, that just right expedition for your classroom experience. Um, and uh, you can visit the link here. It's also linked up in the resources section of the, the website. But it's um, when you click on it, it's a Google Sheet. And um, this is this spreadsheet is managed by the Google Expeditions team and whenever they add new content or update existing content um, there they will update this spreadsheet and um, it's a publicly accessible spreadsheet I would bookmark this spreadsheet so you always have access to it any new expeditions are um, noted at the top of the spreadsheet here and marked you can see which ones are the newest ones that have been added and in the spreadsheet it's going to tell you, tell you the name of that expedition um, the panorama titles or the, the titles of the scenes in that expedition, um, a look, uh, the location if it's provided, and then you get the, the basic description of that expedition as well as um, if that expedition is available on poly.google.com, they'll provide the, the, the quick link to it here. And then some expeditions might have additional materials like um, lesson plans created by other teachers. And so uh, you can scroll through and see like uh, this particular one here on the uh, 1066 Battle of Hastings. Um, there's a link to uh, a lesson plan there that you can, uh, you're welcome to use. And then um, some expeditions have been translated into other languages. And so if it has been translated, you're going to see other available translations here. So this particular one has been translated into German as well. So. It's a really great resource. Let me give you um, a tip here in the spreadsheet. This is how I keep track of any new expeditions or updates. What I do is I um, use the notification rules in this, uh, public, uh, this public Google Sheet. And what I do is I set up a rule so that if any changes are made to the spreadsheet, it sends me a digest email. A digest email is a daily um, email if there were updates made to the spreadsheet. It'll send me one email and show me all of the changes that were made to that spreadsheet that day. You could also send um, an e you can also have a send an email to you right away when, when something has changed. But uh, um, I, I choose the di digest email. But this is a great way to keep up to date. It will send you an email notification letting you know that um, changes were made to the spreadsheet. And typically in the spreadsheet, there's only two reasons why changes would be made. It's either they're updating information to an existing spreadsheet in the uh, expedition in the list, 
or they've added new expeditions to the list. And that's th those are two things you want to know when something has changed and been updated or when something new has been added. And I'm always excited to get that email. I'm like, ooh, what new expeditions have they added today? You'll also notice in the spreadsheet that there are two tabs across the bottom. There's um, the VR expedition, so that's in one tab. All of the virtual reality expeditions that exist in the app are listed here. And you have a separate sheet for um, AR expeditions, augmented reality expeditions. And so all of the AR expeditions are listed here as well. And this is my go-to. I, I typically don't search for expeditions in the app right away. I'll come to the spreadsheet first, because another good tip is to use, um, I'm on a MacBook, so Command F, and I can use a keyword, and let's say um, I'll search for solar system, All right? And it's telling me there are 13 results within this spreadsheet for solar system. And I can quickly move through those um, results here. Um, to search for anything uh, interesting or pertaining to solar systems. So this is a great quick way to conduct a search for keywords based on the content that you're looking for in an expedition. Um, and so from there, I can, I can take a look and say, right, this is the Google Earth World Tour. And once I find something that I think might be useful, then I'll jump over to the Google Expeditions mobile app and find it on there and then download it because now I know the exact name of that expedition. And I can see what the scenes are that, it, that it's taking me to, I can read the description, and then I can make a, a pretty good judgment on whether it might be useful in my classroom. Okay, so two quick tips there for the, the official list of expeditions. You can set a notification rule from the tools menu in the spreadsheet in order to get updates on what's new and updated. And you can do, um, a, um, um, a quick search, a keyword search, um, a find within the spreadsheet just by hitting Control F or Command F on your computer in order to search by, by keyword. So bookmark this, uh, this spreadsheet if you're, you're going to explore expeditions a little later. Um, it'll be your most useful resource. Okay, it's consistently updated, it's categorized, it includes lesson plans and language translations. And then I've also included those, those two very important tips there by searching by keywords and how to set notification reminders in the spreadsheet. So do those things, get yourself set up there and uh, you'll be on your way to finding that just right expedition for your classroom. And there are two really great online communities. Um, if you're watching this live, you're probably already a member of the virtual and augmented reality for education group that I run. It's a, it's a, a free to access Facebook group, um, got thousands of members, great content being shared there, great conversations. I'm going to be doing more um, live events like this within that group. And I also run the um, another Facebook group called the Google Expeditions and Tour Creator for Education group. And that's a group specifically focused on the Google Expeditions app as well as the Google Tour Creator tool that lets you create your own expeditions as well. And so we're exploring those two specific Google tools within that group. So um, these are you can click on these links, jump straight to those groups, feel free to join them. Make sure you agree to the rules. That's very important. I don't accept any, any potential members if you don't agree to the rules of these two groups. So make sure you do that, and then you'll be able to join a, a great community of educators using these tools. Okay, and... The moment you've all been waiting for, here's access to the Google Expeditions Lesson Planner. Um, you can access it via um, the resource website that I showed you earlier, down about the middle of the page. You can click on the, uh, the picture or the button and get your free copy. Um, or you can go to this bit.ly, bit.ly slash expeditionslp to get your free copy of the Google Expeditions Lesson Planner. And um, it's, a, it's a lesson planner that'll help you break down um, how you can effectively use a Google Expedition in your classroom. You don't, you don't just want to uh, take kids on an expedition, but you want them to be able to um, first access prior knowledge, begin to think about what the significance and the connection of this expedition is to what they're learning in class. You know, what's uh, really think about what's going to happen before you take them on that expedition. How are they going to access that prior knowledge and that background, that background knowledge? And then what's going to happen while your students are on that expedition? 
um, you know, it's important that you're mindful of um, the health and safety uh, concerns associated with VR specifically. And so when you're on an expedition, you don't want to keep your students in a VR headset for long periods of time. You know, keep in mind that they're holding a device three inches from their face, right? And so when I build um, a virtual reality field trip, I typically create an activity that will have them in the virtual reality experience for about five minutes. And then I'll pause the expedition to, to pull them out of the experience. And then we'll take some time to, we'll either have a class discussion or they'll do a turn and talk and share with a partner. Or I might have um, a worksheet or a reflection sheet that they're responding to or some type of um, form that they're responding to to reflect on what it is they see and what they're learning and what they're experiencing. And then they'll spend a few minutes doing that and then we'll jump back into the VR experience and spend another five minutes. So you wanna really be strategic and careful about um, how long you're keeping them in and how they're using what they're learning um, instantly in order to apply it to uh, your classroom content. Okay, so that's you know the, the during the expedition phase. And then what are they gonna do with it afterwards? What's gonna happen after? Um, when the expedition is done, think about how they can extend or expand on what, they're, what they've learned in the experience. And um, how are they gonna apply it to what they're learning so that they can internalize it? Um, and so this lesson plan will help you break down that before, during, and after phase of an expedition. Okay, so visit that link, um, get your own copy, and uh, let me know how it goes. If you have any questions or you need help planning out um, an, an expedition experience in your classroom, feel free to reach out in the community, reach out to me on Twitter, or Facebook, or Instagram. I'd be more than happy to help you. But uh, get your free copy of the Google Expeditions Lesson Planner there. And then um, just a quick plug. Um, I'm not, not just uh, focused on expeditions. I like to explore all different kinds of VR and AR experiences for the classroom. And I've just released um, my first um, online self-paced course called Google Street View for the K-12 classroom. Google Street View is my second go-to virtual reality experience for the classroom. If I can't find what I'm looking for in expeditions, I can normally find it in the Google Street View mobile app. It's one of my favorite virtual reality apps for the, the K-12 classroom. Got lots of great content. You can take your students pretty much anywhere in the world that you want, even into outer space. Um, lots of great, great places to go. And I've uh, set up an entire online self-paced course that's, that would walk you through how to use Google Street View. Uh, the course averages to about four to five hours of, uh, of dedicated time to learn how to use the tool. It's, I've got a Google Street View lesson planner in there as well, as, as well as a bunch of other great um, resources and freebies that um, that, that come with um, the course. Uh, so if you're going to check that out, it's at courses.arvreduhub.com, and I'm uh, planning on rolling out more online courses as well. All right, uh, I just want to say thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you dedicating your time to participating in the uh, the Facebook Live, and if you're watching after the fact, I appreciate you checking out this video as well. And again, if you have any comments, thoughts, questions, toss it in the, the comments to this video or reach out to me online. You you can find me um, at EdTechNocation across all the major social networks, as well as in the Facebook communities that I mentioned a few minutes ago in this uh, this broadcast. But uh, thanks again for joining me. And if you're looking for uh, looking for more great AR and VR resources, visit my website, arvreduhub.com.